Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Airline Exam Prep or AEP. Today we shall try to solve some of the questions which were asked in the recent Air India examination. This examination for was for A320 type rated first officers and so we shall focus on some of the aircraft systems which were asked in this examination. So let's start right away. One of the questions which came in recently was from the air conditioning system. When low is selected on the pack flow selector, the pack flow is automatically selected high in case of Number one, APU supplying bleed air. Number two, single pack failure. Number three, abnormally hot and humid conditions. Number four, the number of passengers in the cabin higher than 115. Again, we have four options here with one only, one and two only, one, two and three, one, two, three and four. So before I give you the answer, I would like you to go ahead, pause the video for a second, try and solve this question on your own, and then let's see if you're right or wrong. So go ahead, pause the video. All right, let's look at the answer now. The answer is B, one and two only. So let's try solving the question. When low is selected on the pack flow selector, what is a pack flow selector? Let's pull that up for you. As you can see, I pulled out the pack flow selector over here. This is the pack flow selector. This is the bleed page of the A320 system section. As you can see, currently the pack flow is normal, so the flow is normal here as well in the pack flow section. If I increase or reduce it, you will see corresponding changes to these valve positions. So now it's on high. The pack flow also increases to high. Let's try putting it to low. And as you can see, both packs are now at low flow. Perfect. Now, if you look at the question again, when the low is selected on the pack flow selector, the pack flow is automatically selected high. The keyword here is automatically. So the pack flow is automatically selected high in case of one APU supplying bleed air. Does that happen? So right now, the pack flow is low. Let's see if that happens. So the APU is on and available. Let's put the bleed on available. So the APU bleed is now available. And as you can see, it's opening up and you see the pack flow moving on to high, right? So if I switch it off, you will see again the pack flow returning back to the low position. There you go. So it's very clear that option one is correct. APU supplying bleed air automatically switches the pack flow from low to high. Number two is single pack failure. So anytime we lose one of the packs, as you can see here, if I put a pack one fault, the pack, the remaining pack automatically switches to high. Why is this? Obviously to maintain the air conditioning in the cabin, right? You only have one pack, so you want to maintain sufficient air conditioning. So both statement one and two are correct. Now what about statement number three and statement number four? abnormally hot and humid conditions, or if a number of passengers in the cabin exceeds a certain number. Well, this is where the question gets tricky. Remember, the question is, the pack flow is automatically selected to high, right? So option number three and four is not automatic selections. These are recommendations by Airbus to the pilot flying to switch to high flow if these conditions exist. Now, where is this mentioned? Let me show it to you. If you look at the FCOM extract, as you can see here, this is from the FCOM, Systems display what we just discussed, that manual selection is irrelevant in single pack operation or with APU bleed supply. In these cases, high is automatically selected. We have already seen that. Now let's move on to the next portion, which is if you go to the FCOM procedures, the normal procedures in the overhead panel, you will notice these recommendations by Airbus. It says pack flow selector as required, selected by the pilot flying. Option is low. We select low if the number of occupants is below 141. Bear in mind this changes as per the aircraft. Some aircrafts have higher and lower numbers, so this is not relevant or that relevant to you. Option high, we the pilot flying selects high for abnormally hot and humid conditions, and option normal for all other normal operating cases. Again, they re-emphasize in the APU supplying, pack controllers select high flow automatically, independent of the selector position. So, as you can see, in this question, the correct answer is B, one and two only. Okay, folks, let's move on to question number two. Question number two deals with the icing section. The question is, which ECAM page does the engine anti-ice indication appear on? Option A is bleed page, option B, pressurization page, option C, icing page, option D, none of the above. So let's pull out the icing page over here. As you can see, the system display is available here. The engine warning display is available here. And let's see what happens when you put on the engine anti-ice, right? So the engine anti-ice push buttons have been turned on. Focus on this section over here. You will notice a memo which turns up, which says engine anti-ice is now available. All right. Now let's have a look at the other memo pages as well. So if we pull out, let's say the bleed page, 
you pull out the bleed page, you'll notice there are no engine anti ice indications, right? No indications at all. Let's pull out the pressurization page. Again, there are no indications, but neither are there indications in, let's say, the engine page. So, there are no indications. The only indication that you have of engine anti ice being available is on the engine warning display page uh, of the EWD and on the memo section, correct? So if you look at this question over here, which ECAM page does the engine anti-ice indication appear on? The answer is not bleed page, it's not pressurization page, there is no icing page, right? We have no icing page, it's only engine bleed, pressurization, electric, hydraulic fuel, flight controls, wheel, door, conditioning, and APU. We do not have an icing page, all right? And uh, option D, none of the above. So the answer is option D, none of the above. Now the next question is, what happens when wing anti-ice push button is pressed? Wing anti-ice push button. So the option A is wing anti-ice can only be turned on when the aircraft is in flight. Option B, on the ground, the wing anti-ice turns on for 30 seconds only. Option C, wing anti-ice indication appears on the ECAM memo only. And option D, wing anti-ice indication appears on the pressurization page and the ECAM memo only. So you can pause the video, read the question again, and try and solve the question on your own. All right, so the answer for this question is B. On the ground, wing anti-ice turns on for 30 seconds only. So. Obviously, option A is wrong. Wing anti-ice can be turned on only when the aircraft is in flight. That is incorrect. The wing anti-ice is over here on the icing panel, over here. So let's try putting it on, and you will see the indication for wing anti-ice. All right, I've opened the bleed page up so that you can monitor the wing anti-ice being turned on. I switch on the wing anti-ice, and if you notice over here, the anti-ice indications popped up, right? You also have a display over here for wing anti-ice on the, on the memo section. Let me try switching it on again. I want you to notice this section and this area over here. You will see it switching off. So, as you can see, wing anti-ice is now off and the memo has disappeared. Remember, we only have an indication for wing anti-ice and not for uh, engine anti-ice on the bleed page. All right. So, back to the question. If you look at the FCOM, let's look at the FCOM for the remaining section. So, option C and D is obviously wrong. Wing anti-ice indication appears on the ECAM memo only. That is incorrect. We have just uh, seen that it appears on the bleed page as well. Uh, option D is also incorrect. Wing anti ice indication appears on pressurization page and ECAM memo only. That is also incorrect, right? It appears on the ECAM memo as well as on the bleed page. So option C and D are wrong. Option A is definitely wrong. It can be switched on on the ground for testing purposes. Airbus allows you to switch on the wing anti ice on the ground. So you can see here in the FCOM extract, it says here that when you switch it on, the light comes on in blue, right? It comes on in blue. Comes on in blue over here. After which, the wing anti ice appears on the ECAM memo page. You notice that appears on the ECAM memo. Wing anti-ice control valves open if pneumatic supply is available. Obviously, the pneumatic supply is available, right, from the engines. And finally, on the ground, the wing anti-ice control valves open for 30 seconds only. It's a test sequence, correct? Not more than 30 seconds. Why not more than 30 seconds? Because quite simply, you don't want to damage the wings, right? The anti-ice is hot air blowing onto the slat section of the wings, so you don't want to damage the wings. So it's only for 30 seconds on the ground. So these are the indications for anti-ice, which I've just described. All right, let's move on to the next question. Line is supplied by which fuel system? The options are... A, right fuel feed line. Option B is left fuel feed line. Option C, is center tank pumps only. Option D is APU has its own fuel tank which supplies when the aircraft is on batteries only. So pause the video and try and answer this question. Okay, so the answer for this question is Bravo or B, left fuel feed line. The APU fuel line is supplied by which fuel system? The left fuel feed line. Now, where does that show up on the system? Let's pull out the fuel page over here. As you can see, it very clearly shows you that even on the fuel page, there we go, that the APU is supplied from the left side, correct? And even if the cross feed is shut, right, the APU is still supplied from the left tanks. So there you go. So the option is Bravo, left fuel feed line. Let's have a look at the FCOM as well. What does the FCOM say? The FCOM says the same thing. The left fuel feed line supplies the APU and the required pressure is normally available from the tank pumps. And if pressure is not available, that is you're on batteries only, or if your pumps are off, the APU fuel pump starts automatically, correct? So as you can see here, this is a very easy question which you should be able to answer in the actual examination. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, folks, so the next question reads, when can the APU bleed be used? This is taken directly from the FCOM limitations section. And uh, if you go to the FCOM limitations under the APU chapter, you will notice the answer to this question. So the options are at any altitude below aircraft service ceiling at 39,800 feet. Option B, any altitude below 25,000 feet only. Option C, any altitude below 22,500 feet. And option D, any altitude below 15,000 feet only. So, go ahead, pause the video, and let's see if you can solve this question. So, the answer for this question is, very obviously, option C, any altitude below 22,500 feet. Now, let me pull out the FCOM first before I show it on the actual aircraft so you can understand what we are talking about here. 
Remember, the APU can be used at any altitude up to 39,800 feet, which is the aircraft service ceiling, right? But what portion of the APU can you use? You can use only the APU electrical power. Remember, the electrical power of the APU can be utilized. Let's say you lose an engine at 39,000 feet. Sure, go ahead, switch on the APU, and it can be used to back up the AC bus 2 or AC bus 1 or whatever the situation demands, right? But remember, at 39,000 feet, let's say your APU is on and you decide, hey, I want some extra air conditioning. I want the aircraft to be a little cooler. Let me try putting on the APU bleed. Remember, the APU bleed will not switch on at 39,000 feet. It will only switch on if the aircraft is below 22,500 feet. So as you can see here, it says here very clearly, bleed air and electrical power is only available below 22,500 feet, right? Bear in mind, some aircrafts have this limitation set as 20,000. But anyway, for the purpose of this question, you will notice the only option available here is any altitude below 22,500 feet. So the answer is Charlie. The AP bleed can be used below 22,500 feet. Now let's try utilizing this in the aircraft. I just wanted to show you now, we're currently at 33,000 feet. So let's try switching on the APU and let's see what happens. So as you can see here, I've kept the system displays available for you, the engine warning display, the bleed page, as you can see, the APU is not supplying bleed currently, right? And the bleed page is open as well. So let's have a look and see what happens when I switch on the APU bleed. So I've selected the APU bleed, right? Normally when I select the APU bleed, you will notice that the APU bleed valve would open up and supply the bleed for pack one or pack two as required. Correct? So in this case, the APU bleed remains switched off because we are above the limitation ceiling of 22,500 feet. And very shortly, you will receive an ECAM as well, which says APU bleed fault. There you go. It says error, APU bleed fault. Now, why does this indication pop up? Quite simply, because we switched on the APU bleed, but the bleed valve remains closed. So I hope these questions have helped you understand the kind of questions which Air India sets, the type of uh, studies that you need to do, the relevant sections of the FCOM you need to refer to pass this examination successfully. If you have any doubts, please feel free to contact Airline Exam Prep or AEP. We put our contact details in the video link description below. So go ahead, feel free to DM me and I shall help you out and I shall make sure that you pass this exam successfully. Once again, have a beautiful day.